And Shockwave, we have an international player joining us in the booth right now. Hef is joining from Team Immunity. Hef, are you pumped up for this game too? Yeah, yeah, I'm real pumped. Real and, pumped. And you know a bit about both of these teams here. You've played against Warriors in the past. Tell me, what do you expect to see out of them coming up in this next game type of Team Slayer on Countdown? Um, well, we had a chance to pre-land both the squads, so um, I got a bit of, you know, you know, personal knowledge about the teams, but uh, look to see Warriors control the Attics. Uh, when we played them, they were just controlling radios, sorry, that's, we call it Attics. Uh, they were controlling radios all game, controlling up top, um, using the jetpacks to get up top and forcing you to push down the streets and, yeah, pretty much forcing you to come to them. We'll see if they go with that strategy. Here we go, guys. It is time for game number two, Countdown Team Slayer. All right, here we go. We are getting game number two started with the guy who finished game number one. It is Snakebite from Team Warriors. You just saw him pick up the overkill to run in flag number three. But in this game type, it's going to be all about just pure slay. No flags to worry about. And it looks like right away Snakebite is going to go for that new custom power-up. Interesting play here by Snakebite. He just was absolutely destroying with the sniper. I was actually going to wonder up if they were going to change their strategy and have him go for it off the beginning. But it doesn't look like that as we see a fight now for the top. But Hef, I wanted to ask you a question. What was your final placing here in Anon? Uh, unfortunately, we got 23rd. We're pretty disappointing with our placing. Um, we're hoping to push top 16, but uh, yeah, it happens. We choked, unfortunately. Is this your first tournament here in the States? Um, for Halo Reach it is. For Halo 3, we were in Columbus last year and we came 17th, so choked again. <laughs> <laughs> so close, but pretty impressive nonetheless. And I want to ask you, was it hard to kind of, the time differential? Um, America, does that play a part, do you think, in any of the games? Uh, no, not at all. We came here on Monday, so uh, we were we pretty much were fine after the first day. I mean, we're gamers, so, you know, we're born and bred to stay up late and adjust the time differences. Well, Hef, I think in honor of you and the rest of Australia, Shockwave and I are going to have to put on our Aussie accents for the rest of this game. Oh, you ready? God. Cheers, mate. <laughs> All right, we got Ninja picking up the Firebird with the pole there. Now pulling out this sniper here in the back of the map at the big door. He's got snake bait in front of him. Can't finish off the kill. The snake is going to get away. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it that well, Puckett. I'm not going to embarrass myself. You got to give us one. Going. Give us one. Come on. I can do the cheers, mate. That's all I can <laughs> get. You're both more Australian than I am. <laughs> So we got Ninja staying alive here, taking some shots. He's going to be cleaned up by Dursky, who will be making his way up to the left attic. Walshy sitting outside here for turning point. Shockwave, when is the next power weapon or power up coming up? <laughs> We're looking at Sniper. Sniper actually just pops. Pef, you're going to have to come in here. I don't have the Australian accent. I want to keep what? it pretty traditional here. Um, I, got, I got nothing. Um. <laughs> uh, so. You said you've got a little bit inside Scoop Warriors. They're going to be going into the attics. That's the area they're going to be trying to control. In Countdown Team Slayer, have you seen kind of the meta game of it, of it evolve now that the fact you used to see a really fast paced Countdown Team Slayer's games? Yeah. It seems here in Anaheim they've been slower paced. Do you think that's just players knowing how to play it and how to set up? Um, it, it, it depends. Like, uh, teams like Status Quo, who we also pre land they like to play really aggressive and push to your side constantly and keep pressure on you and try and keep your spawn trap. Whereas, uh, like um, Warriors especially, we notice they love to control the uh, addicts and slow play and force you guys down and use their teamwork to uh, you know, punish you for making those little mistakes. And use the power weapons, obviously, to control them and keep them in their hands. So, if they do die in the radio, their other teammates still have control so they can you know, keep the power weapons. Right now the score 15 to 14 in favor of Team Warriors. You got strong side on your screen going for the pummel. He's going to pick up the easy kill there after hitting the melee. And strong side is going to be working with Twilight who's trying to secure these rockets. The rockets down bottom middle shock, but you gotta give it at least one attempt. Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh my god, you're putting me on the spot here. You know next time you throw it to me, I'll put on my Australian accent, but right now. It seems that you've got a very close game here. You're not getting out of it. I, I, I know, eventually, sooner or later, I'm going to be forced to actually make this accent here and embarrass myself. 
Strong side looking for a player down on the stairs. Big shout out to ACL and all of the Aussie gamers tuning in. Love how many people are watching from all over the world. Right now we have a great game between Warriors and Turning Point. Just a two kill game here with Warriors sitting up top with the power weapons. That's Twilight with that sniper rifle hitting two body shots and he also has a rocket on his back. That's a pocket rocket. But hey, it's okay. He's got a few sniper shots left. Twilight going up top, 22 to 17. And now he's completely out of ammo and he finds a needle rifle down low. Has a player in front of him at the drop down. No one is going to be there as they went ahead and went down low. Twilight though, finished fourth with Capital Punishment, teaming with Dursky, and he was the, the player selected by Strongside. He said, I was talking to Strongside, he said, Twilight is really one of the most underrated players, and I saw more potential of teaming with him and Dursky than I would with Crim6 and Twin Savior. That's going to be a huge point. I mean, they definitely had a chance of teaming with both of those duos from Capital Punishment, but Strongside wanted to team with Twilight and Dursky, and I think it might have had to do a little bit of the maturity, the fact that Dursky and Twilight have been around on the circuit for a little bit longer. And I've talked about Twilight before, I think his best ability is his solid, not moving shot. I've seen Cloud do it in the past, the big thing with him, it's hard, especially long range, to beat him out because he doesn't twitch his aimer. Twilight's kind of the same type of breed. I love this play here. Twilight scared best man down low. Strong side stayed in the basement, cleaned up the kill, and now he'll be making his way up the attic. And looking for players over at Health Pack. Warriors still leading here in game number two, 33 to 26. Turning point needs something to turn this game around. Hef, if there's gonna be anyone from the TP squad, who do you think will be that key player? Um, well, you're obviously looking for Ninja to start hanging out with Snipe. Like, when that kid hates up, it's ridiculous. Um, he just doesn't miss. Um, they just need to keep putting pressure on the squad, keep getting different angles, and um, get a good solid push on them and get a four down, get him out of the attics, and, you know, turn this game around. They Rockets were... and Snipe come up now, so, you know, it's pretty much whoever wins this next push will probably take the lead. They were down six, now down four, and Snakebite is going to secure the Rockets here for Warriors, but Walshie's on a spree, just like he said in his interview with Julie, he's going to heat up, get a few killing sprees. His team's down four, though, and he's got to look out for Snakebite, who is on his side of the map, making his way up top with the jetpack. Now, uh, have you got a chance to watch Walsh play here in Halo Reach? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I was a little bit of a Walsh hater. I didn't think he'd be that great, but he has impressed me so much. He is such a great player. I mean, coming into this land, I didn't even think, uh, the free land, or in this tournament, I didn't think Tony Point were a top 16 team, and then we played them, and they showed me what's up. <laughs> yeah. This is a game Welcome changer to right here, yeah. guys. They're all sick players. Walshie picking up the back smack on Snakebite, who had those rockets. Looks like Walshie versus Twilight. Now, Walshie trying to kill all of the players with power ups for this Warrior squad. He's finally going to be cleaned up, and Strongside has the sniper once again. So, Shockwave, the real difference in this game has been the power weapon control here. Warriors doing a much better job than we're seeing turning point. Absolutely. They picked up both the rockets, and we've seen the Sharks happen with the sniper rifle. Missing two shots there. But he seemed to have been really strong all the way through with it. They're hitting a body shot on McWin and letting his teammates finish up the kill. But turning point only five kills down. They're still in this. We have seen teams come back before. A countdown seems like right at the end of the game. Strong side taking down shields. His teammates picking up easy kills. Snakebite just got a double to make it 45 to 39. Five kills away as Warriors from taking a 2-0 lead here in our best of five series. They have total top control. All four members up top. Looking over there at turning point, we got Ninja outside at the small door. Walshie also with him there. Best man is on level two trying to get an angle, and Mick Wynn is trying to flank up top from the drop down. He has the custom power up. Let's see if he can do anything on the left side of the map. They got Walshie pinned up here in the attic. Yeah, um, I'm just going to say, you've uh, managed to weasel out of not doing your Australian accent uh, so I'm, far. I'm, I almost <laughs> made it all the way through. Come on, man. You can't throw me under the bus like this. Do it. Quit being a wuss. Go. Watch Co me commentate the rest of the game in You got Australia. it, you got this. Strong side making his way up the top middle here. I see taking shots down from the window. I'm already embarrassed. Keep going, I'm keep going. Fuck it. But you see McWin putting shots here on strong side. But like you said, have Warriors definitely controlling here the addicts. We want to make sure to control the rest of the game and the power weapons. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, pretty much the whoever will get these next rockets coming up at 6'10. Uh, we'll win the game.
Oh, yes, they will win the game if they get those rocket five kills down. <laughs> and we see. I'm not. I'm not gonna finish. This. I'm, I'm <laughs> making you commentate the rest of this game in the Aussie accent. Twilight. Well, we see Snakebite now picking up the rockets here for Turning Point, using that jetpack, oh. but dropping the rockets in a crazy spot. Have you ever seen anything like that before, Hep? I've never seen anything like that or heard an accent like that. <laughs> I don't even know what country that's I'm making from. it up as I go along. All right, right McWin has both power weapons here. 47 to 45. <laughs> Mick Wynn and Turning Point trying to have a late game comeback. They're only down two kills here, and Mick Wynn is going to be the key player in this game. The rest of Turning Point just needs to stay alive. They cannot give up any deaths. No, but two kills here, Mick Wynn now bringing it back to just one kill. The rocket's going to be huge here. It seems Turning Point kind of making a late push here, but I think they're going to want to stop and kind of play this a little bit slower. Mick Wynn going up top, 48 to 47. This one coming down to the wire. Mick Wynn still having one rocket to work with here for our blue squad. Looking down the drop down spots, Dursky is going to pick up the 48th kill, tying it up. It's all going to come down to this one. Snake by chasing down Mick Wynn. Going for another player up in the attic. We have Warriors up top. Strong side going for the back smack to finish the game. It's oh. Ninja. Ninja grabs the health back. Oh. And the goal scope. But there we go. Warriors are going to finish it. Great playing from strong side to finish the game. Wow. If Ninja pulled that play off, it would have been also one of the plays of the tournament. But Warriors taking commanding 2-0 lead over turning point. A little bit surprising, especially from the land results we've seen these two teams play. That game was a lot of fun to watch, and especially to hear you commentate in Australian. 15 and 7 out of strong side. And guys, we are not done yet. We got to give a big shout out to everyone watching around the world. Warriors up 2 0 over turning point. Nate, if you could bring up some graphics, we got people tweeting us from around the globe showcasing their setups. Here we got MLG Fragster from Rome, Italy, watching it there on his desktop. Big shout out to Ryan White from Dallas, Texas. Check out all of the monitors. He's got a party watching this thing. Maria Masumi from Norway. I think that's the first uh, Norway text we've gotten all day. And that's a pretty good view right there. You want to move there with me? It seems pretty, pretty nice. Ollie Hinn from Bristol, England. Check out the setup there. And we got Zach Coy from Helsinki, Finland. Guys, thank you all for watching from around the world. Keep texting me at MLG Puck, and I'll keep showcasing your pictures. Hef, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. It's been a blast. So happy to see you guys back on the pro circuit. Best of luck. Are you guys going to be able to make it out to another event? Um, hopefully, we get to, see, get to come to the last two events. That That's would, the plan so far. That would be absolutely fantastic. We sure hope to see you back in another competition. Thank you for joining us in the booth. Shockwave and I will be back with game number three after this. Thanks for having me, guys.